When God created the world and everything in it, He made man in His own image to live here and take care of the world. However, humans started doing evil things and stopped following His commands. They did not pray to Him and they only cared for their own comfort. God decided to destroy the earth and everybody in it. There was only one man who loved God, Noah. Noah loved and worshipped God. He believed in God even though nobody else did. He also taught his family to love and fear God. One day, God spoke to Noah. Noah, you are a good man. You are righteous and you live a good life with your family. But the world has become evil and all the people in the world deserve to die. Noah was shocked at what he heard but he remained calm. But God, these are your people. Have mercy on them. No, Noah. The world has to be destroyed. I will send a great flood that will destroy the whole of Earth. It will rain without end for 40 days. Every living being on Earth will be destroyed. So be it. Let your will be done. Fear not, Noah. I have come to warn you because you have been a good man. You and your family will survive the flood. You are merciful, my God. You will have to build an ark for you and your family. What is an ark, my Lord? An ark is a big wooden boat. You will build this ark to protect your family from the flood. The ark should be big enough for your family. You will also be taking many animals along with you, so that they can survive too. But God, I have no knowledge about building arcs. How will I do this? Do not worry. I will give you all the instructions you need. Just follow them, and you will be able to build it without any problem. Okay, my lord. I will follow your instructions and do as you say. You must also talk to the people around you and try to convince them to mend their ways. Tell them to turn to me, pray to me, and fear me. Tell them to be kind and do good things. Tell them to stop being selfish and live a good life. I will do as you say, my lord. And as God instructed, Noah started to cut down trees. He made big planks out of the wood to build his ark. People started noticing what Noah was doing. They gathered around him as he shaped his planks and piled them up. They were curious. Noah, what are you doing? Hello, friend. I am building an ark. What is an ark? It is a big boat, my friend. It will protect me and my family from the flood. What flood? My dear friend, God, our Creator, spoke to me. He said that He is angry with the people, and He is going to destroy all living beings with a flood. My dear Noah, we don't understand. Where is this flood coming from? God will send heavy rains. It will rain non-stop for 40 days, and a flood will come and wipe out everything. You can stop this. God is angry with your ways. You only have to turn to Him and mend your ways. Pray to Him. Ask Him for forgiveness and you will be saved. You can come with me and my ark. You will be saved from the flood. Noah, have you gone mad? You do not make any sense. Why are you doing all this? Stop building this nonsense ark and look after your family. Sorry, my friend, this is my work. God has asked me to do this. I have to obey Him. I will build this ark as He has told me. The villagers laughed loudly and returned to their homes. By now, Noah had gathered all the food grains, the seeds, and the animals. He stored the food grains in the ark. God then made the animals arrive in pairs. Every animal and bird on the earth waited in line patiently to enter the ark. 
There were lions, tigers, elephants, snakes, parrots, zebras, everyone. Two by two, they entered the ark. Then Noah called to the villagers and once again invited them to enter his ark. The people still refused to believe in him. They could not understand why he was collecting animals and placing them in the ark. They continued to sin against God and they refused to enter. You said it would rain for 40 days, Noah. I don't even see a drip of rain anywhere. Do you still think that you're making any sense? Do you really think that this God is going to save you? You have been making a fool of yourself and trying to make us all fools as well. I believe in my Lord. He will never abandon me. He has always guided me to do what is right. I am still inviting you to join me in the ark. You will be saved. We are not coming into your stupid ark. You can do as you please. Just leave us alone now. Once Noah had completed filling up his ark with the animals, God told Noah to assemble his family and bring them into the ark. Once they had entered the ark, the door was closed and the ark was sealed shut. As soon as the ark was sealed, the first drops of rain began to fall on earth. The villagers were amazed as there had not been any rains for a very long time. Soon it was raining heavily and big thunderclouds gathered all around the village. It continued to rain for days and soon the water was flooding the village. The ark then began to float over the water. People in the village were running for shelter as their homes had been swept away by the flood. Meanwhile, Noah, his family, and the animals he had brought with him were safe and warm in the ark. It rained heavily for 40 days, and in the end there was nothing but water all around. All living beings were drowned, and even the highest mountains were covered by the flood. Noah looked out of the window of his ark and could see nothing but water all around. After 40 days and 40 nights of rain, it stopped raining. The water level slowly started coming down. The ark continued to sail with Noah's family and the animals. They kept sailing in search of dry land. After many days, Noah sent a dove out in search of dry land. The dove returned as it could not find any place to make a nest. The water still covered every patch of dry land. Noah waited for one week and then sent the dove out again. This time, the dove returned with an olive branch. This meant that the water levels had come down. Noah waited for one more week, and this time, when he sent the dove out, it did not return. This was a sign that the water had come down and there was dry land. Soon, the ark came to a stop on top of a dry mountain. Then God spoke to Noah. Noah! It is now safe for you and your family to leave the ark. You can step out to the land. You can now lead a new life with your family. Release all the animals. Let them once again roam the earth. Thank you, my Lord. I am thankful for your love and faith in me. You have kept me safe through all this. My family is alive and well because of you. We owe our lives to you. You are a righteous man, Noah. Your faith in me has saved you. Your family has been saved because of your good deeds. I promise that I will never again send the floods. As a reminder of this promise, God created a beautiful rainbow. Noah and his family lived for a long time on earth. They had many children, and soon Noah's children and grandchildren were spread all over the world. Isaac and Rebekah had two sons, Esau and Jacob. 
Isaac loved Esau more, but Rebekah loved her second son, Jacob, more than she loved Esau. One day, when Esau returned from the fields, he was very, very hungry, and he went up to his twin brother. Give me something to eat, brother. I'm dying of hunger. I will give you this bowl of stew in exchange for something I want from you. What is it that you want? Tell me fast. I cannot wait. I need to eat. I want you to give up your right to our father's inheritance and property. What? Well, it is for you to decide. If you don't agree, you can get your own food. Esau was so hungry that he couldn't think straight. He agreed to give up his blessings in exchange for a bowl of stew. This showed that Esau did not value what was his birthright. If he could think of giving up his inheritance for just a bowl of stew, he was not fit to be Isaac's heir and inheritor. After this, Rebekah helped her favorite son Jacob to trick her blind husband so that Jacob would be his heir. But Esau soon realized what he had done and was furious at the way he felt his brother had duped him. I have been cheated. My own mother and brother have cheated me. I will take revenge. I will kill Jacob. He will pay for what he has done. Rebekah overheard Esau plotting to kill his brother and became very alarmed. She ran to warn Jacob. Jacob! Oh, Jacob, hurry, you must leave. Your brother is very angry. He is going to kill you. You have to go away as soon as you can. What? Oh, no. But where will I go, mother? Where can I hide from him? I know where you can go. My brother, your uncle Laban, lives in Haran, which is quite far from here. Go there, and he will take care of you. Early the next morning, as soon as the sun started to rise, Jacob quietly left his house to go to Haran. Rebekah came to the door and gave him a bag with some things for the way. Go, my son. May God be with you. Rebekah waved to Jacob, tears streaming down her cheeks. Jacob traveled for several days, walking during the day and sleeping by the roadside at night. One day, he was feeling very tired and decided to rest for some time. This looks like a good place to sleep for a while. I will continue my journey after I am rested. Jacob saw a large stone nearby, on which he lay his head and fell asleep. And what a dream he had! He saw a very, very long stairway, which started from the ground and reached up to heaven. There were angels going up and down the stairs, and there, at the very top, was God. And then God spoke to Jacob. Jacob, this land shall belong to you and to your descendants. Take good care of it. When Jacob woke up, he couldn't believe that God had actually spoken to him. My Lord has spoken to me. My Lord has spoken to me. I feel so blessed. This place shall be called Bethel, the house of the Lord. This stone shall be the altar in this house of worship. Jacob then again continued on his journey to Haran. After walking for a few days, he saw some shepherds near a well who were waiting to water their sheep. Jacob went up to them. Tell me, dear brothers, would you know where my uncle Laban lives? I have traveled far to find him. Sure we do. He stays quite close by. Do you see that pretty lady coming this way? She is his daughter, Rachel. When Jacob laid his eyes on Rachel, he immediately fell in love with her. When he saw her trying to lift the heavy stone on the well so that she could water her sheep, he went forward to help her. Here, let me do it. This stone is too heavy for you to lift. Oh, thank you so much, kind sir. Please, 
call me Jacob. I am your cousin, your Aunt Rebecca's son. In fact, I was on my way to your house to meet Uncle Laban. Rachel looked at Jacob shyly and asked him to follow her. You look very tired. Come, our house is not far. On reaching the house, Jacob greeted his uncle warmly. I am so happy to meet you, uncle. Mother has asked me to be here with you as my brother Esau wants to kill me. Oh no, that is terrible. Don't worry, you can stay here for as long as you like, son. You will be safe here, and you can also work for me. I will pay you for it. Thank you so much, uncle. I really appreciate what you are doing for me. Er, I have just one desire, if you would be kind enough to consider it. Tell me what you desire, son. Don't be afraid. You have very kindly offered to pay me for working for you, but I would be happy to work for you without any wages. But why would you work for me free? I don't understand. Uncle, instead of wages, I would be very grateful if you could give me the hand of your daughter Rachel in marriage. Hmm, all right. You work for me for seven years, and then you can marry my daughter. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you so much. Rachel also liked Jacob, but she was very disappointed to hear what her father said. Oh, Jacob, I don't think what father is doing is right. We both want to marry each other. Why should we have to wait for seven years? I love you so much, Rachel, that I'm sure even seven years will just fly by quickly. I can't wait to make you mine. And so Jacob went to work for his uncle. He worked very hard and for very long hours, but he did not mind because he kept thinking of marrying Rachel after the seven years were over. Rachel, my love, it is now just a matter of a few days and you will finally be mine. I also can't wait to marry you, my dear Jacob. Finally, the big day arrived when Jacob was to marry Rachel. Laban had made arrangements for a grand wedding. Many people had been invited, but when Jacob saw his bride, he was shocked. What is this, uncle? You had promised me Rachel in marriage, but this is Leah. Leah was Rachel's elder sister who is not as beautiful as Rachel. Er, uh, well, you have to understand, Jacob. I cannot get my younger daughter married until my elder daughter is married. But this is not fair, uncle. You have gone back on your word. Calm down, calm down, son. Don't get so angry. But I cannot accept this. I love Rachel and want her as my wife. Well then, if you love Rachel so much, you can marry her also at the end of the week. Really? You mean it? You can marry Rachel, but for that you have to work for me for another seven years. Do you agree? Jacob was very angry, but he could do nothing. The thought of not having Rachel was unbearable for him. All right, uncle. I agree. I will work for you for another seven years. No, Jacob, you don't have to do that. Father is not doing right. Rachel, I cannot imagine a life without you. You are the love of my life. Just like the first seven years passed, even these seven years will pass. But now I will have you with me, so it will not be difficult at all. A week after Jacob got married to Leah, he once again got married, this time to his sweetheart, Rachel. Though he now had two wives, Rachel was the one he loved.